I was driving home from town uh, one night and I was probably out of it. I, I don't remember, but this song came on the radio and I'd never heard it before. Obviously knew John Fogerty, but I'd never heard this rocking all over the world. And uh, I thought, what a great song. The chorus, I like it, I like it. And it was just, I thought, <clears throat> that would be so great for us. And the fact that I'd never heard it, I thought, well, this couldn't have been a hit here, you know. And it so turned out that, you know, not many people knew that song from Fogarty. And uh, so we were going off to Sweden to do the album, and I said to everybody, you know, this song, this rocking all over the world, we got to do this. And everybody was a little bit, yeah, OK, all right, don't go on, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at it. And we did the album out in Sweden, <clears throat> and uh, God knows what it was going to be called. And it was the very last song, and I said to Pip Williams, I said, look, are we going to have a, oh, go on, come on then, we'll have a bash at it. And of course, you know, it was like the matchstick men uh, syndrome, you know, go on, we'll give it a try, yeah. And uh, it just turned out like it turned out, just magic straight away, it was magical. And the bit on the end, da, 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 just, you know, just rounds it off so beautifully. And what a great song. One of the best choruses, simple as you like, but I like it, I like it, I like it. You can't get better than that, can you? Great song. So, uh, we're very lucky to <laughs> have been actually in my car that night. Because you sometimes think to yourself, don't you? Uh, what would have happened if, if we hadn't have found rocking all over the world, if I hadn't have been in the car that night and hadn't heard it? You know, there, there would have been a bloody great... Well, there wouldn't have been a gap, but we wouldn't have it, and that's kind of weird. Yeah. I appreciate this is a very difficult question, this next one, but what do you put down for the fact that this, 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 this is this one song, this one song that dies the death for him and explodes for you guys? Well, it's it's uh, it's an odd one, isn't it? It's uh, it it really is an odd one. Um, I don't really remember Fogarty's version. I mean, you know, I, I I liked the song, but I didn't pay attention to any of the detail in it. And maybe it was just one of his little throwaway songs because I I don't think it was uh, I don't think it was a hit in America either. I, I think it was just like I don't know an album track for him or something. And I think Bon Jovi do a b version of it as well. It's not as good as ours, but I think they do. Uh, I think they do a version of it. Um, but certainly, we've uh, we've swelled the uh, the bank account uh, for him uh, with that song. And it's funny, you know, because we um, we worked together quite recently. We did uh, the Montreux Festival together, and uh, a bit like Ginger Baker, really. Do you know what? He didn't say a word to us not a word we sort of ambled past him in the the corridor you know and he didn't he didn't clearly didn't want to talk to us and I, I just don't understand that sometimes you get some pretty weird people sometimes in our business and you know I, I don't like to say anything bad about anybody but he's a bit strange Fogarty well that's how I found him anyway and apparently he was um, you know oh, I won't say any more I won't say any more Let's just be pleased that we found the song. I don't know why it wasn't a hit for him. I have no idea, but I'm fucking pleased it was a hit for us. On the top of the pop's appearance, it's not actually how it is, it's a life-size pop. Yeah. Um, wired to the rigging with Colin Johnson at the helm. <laughs> Correct. Why is Alan not there? Well, Alan was, wasn't on the rocking video because um, he was living in Australia at the time. He'd fallen in love with this very beautiful girl and uh, gone off to live in, in Sydney. And we said to him, this is where the cracks were starting to appear, you know. It's a great shame, really. But, you know, to move to Australia, just as the band is really, you know, getting big, and to move out there is quite a, quite a, a wrong career move, I feel, somehow. And I phoned him up and I said, Alan, you know, you've got to get over it because they want to shoot the video in the next few days. I can't come over in the next few days and don't you shoot the video without me. And it got a little bit heated where, you know, you say, well, enough, you know, we've, we've got to shoot it. If the record's going berserk and, you know, we want the video. And he said, well, I can't come over. Don't you shoot it without me. Consequently, you know, Colin came up with the idea, well, let's use the puppet. 
and it was incredible. I swear some people don't even know these days. John Coughlin told us he got home that night. There was an answering machine message. I don't know if you know about this. I'm sure you did. And his wife pressed it. And it, John, John, it's blah blah whoever it was. I think you should take Alan to a doctor. He ain't looking well <laughs> on the pops tonight. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you know, there wasn't, there weren't any really great shots of of the puppet. Just one, I mean, full frame of it, I think. <clears throat> but in the background, I mean, it's just, it's just so funny. And uh, I mean, it's it's made the video really quite special, you know. So in a way, um, and oh, well, Alan didn't like it, you know. I mean, he wasn't happy about it, and that's really when the the cracks really started to appear, really.